Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the MakerFire Armo 65 Lite Micro Brushed FEV Quadcopter. In this video I'm going to go over its features and test it both indoors and outdoors. The Armo 65 Lite is available in two versions. You can get a ready-to-fly version which comes with a remote controller and costs $50 and you can get it without the remote controller and then it costs $7 less. Inside this pretty nice packaging we can find the remote controller since this is the ready-to-fly version. You will need three AAA batteries in order to operate it and they are not included in the kit. Next we can find the Armo 65 Lite Micro Brushed Quadcopter, a bag with one set of spare 31mm full bladed props, spare screws, a simple USB charger which will enable you to charge LiPo and LHP batteries. Make sure to set it to 4.35 volts if you are going to use it to charge the included battery which is a Crazy Pony 300mAh 1S LHV battery with a PH 2mm connector. In terms of specifications, the Armo 65 Lite is using a ducted plastic frame with a wheelbase of 65mm. The motors are 716, 17,600 kV brushed motors. It is using 31mm props. On top we can find an all-in-one 650 TV line CMOS camera with an integrated 40 channels VTX and its output strength is 25mV. Finally on the center we can find the flight controller, it is flashed with silverware firmware, supports both acro and stabilized modes and has an integrated receiver which is using the Bayang protocol. The weight of the 65 Lite is 24.3 grams not including the battery and 31.9 grams including it, so it's actually a little bit heavier than the US 65 which weighs 21.9 grams. Setting up the frequency is done using the button on top of the camera. Short pressing it is going to switch between the 8 available channels and long pressing it is going to switch between the 5 available bands. The left LED on top is channel number 1 and then it goes all the way to channel number 8 and the LED on the bottom indicates the band. The first one on the left is A, then B, E, F and finally R. After plugging in the battery, the 65 Lite is going to calibrate its accelerometer and enter bind mode. You can see that it is indicated by this rapid LED flashing. Then if you're going to use the included remote controller, if you have the ready to fly version or actually any other remote controller that supports the Bayan protocol, all you have to do is just to simply turn it on and now the quadcopter is bound. On the remote controller on the front we can find the trim buttons for the sticks. The left button over here is the arm switch, so after pressing it the quadcopter is going to arm and pressing it again is going to disarm the quadcopter. And the button over here is going to switch between acro mode and stabilize mode. If you are going to use a multi-protocol remote controller such as the THSD from Jumper, you will need to go to setup, model menu, model setup, then choose Bayang protocol, hit reinit, and now the quadcopter is bound. Channel number 6 is the arm switch, so you can see now the quadcopter is armed and now it's disarmed. If you have the mode 2 version, which is as far as I know the only version that is being sold, this is the order of the channel, so the first channel is aileron, then elevator, throttle, and finally the rudder. In this page under MakerFile Wiki you can find the full instructions, and it's going to show you how to switch between the different modes, how to adjust the PIDs, and also how to set up the different multi-protocol devices. So if you own this quadcopter, I recommend to check it out and I'm going to put a link to this page in the description box down below. Now before playing the flight footage, I'm going to give you my conclusion since I've already flown the Armo 65 Lite. What I can tell you about it is that even though it is not using a beta flight flight controller and it does not feature an on-screen display and it is not using brushless motors, this is an excellent micro brushed quadcopter. But you're only going to fully enjoy this quadcopter like I did if you're going to get this type of remote controller because if you're going to fly with this toy grade remote controller you are not going to enjoy the quadcopter. The distance was actually pretty good using this remote controller. I think that it was over 50 meters but the big problem is that these gimbals are just not precise and you won't be able to fly the quadcopter like I did if you're going to use this remote controller. You can if you want 3D print an extension and then maybe the gimbals are going to be a little better but you will never be able to fly the quadcopter in a precise manner if you're going to stick to this remote controller. 
So using this type of remote controller or a multi-protocol model will make your experience with this quadcopter much better. In addition, the flight time was great. I got about three and a half minutes and I also tested the hover time and I got four and a half minutes using the 300 milliampere one S LHV battery, which is pretty impressive. So of course, if you're getting this quadcopter, make sure to get a couple of more batteries and I also recommend to get a battery charger that can charge multiple batteries simultaneously. In addition, the props were great as well. They never came off during the flights like I had experience with other micro quadcopters. And in terms of durability, I crashed it a few times as you're going to see in the video, but nothing happened to the frame. Of course, it is not unbreakable, but from what I can tell, it's very durable. And even though I crashed it a few times, the frame is still in one piece. So I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions about the Armor 65 Lite, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.